Um, so I'm gonna call the, the meeting to order. It's August 16th at 6 p.m. Um, first up on our agenda is interviews for the Town Historic Preservation Commission. Is um, Matt Powers no. online here? No, he's in the room. Yeah. Or in person? Okay. Yeah, well, I, I guess. So, yeah, Ray, I suppose um, since you're vice chair and you're there in front of them, do you want to? Um... Yeah. So, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in the um, Historic Preservation Commission? Okay. Um, well, I'm familiar with the uh, CLG process in the towns uh, that are participating, and um, this was sort of a dialogue that had occurred many years ago with the uh, resurveying of the village district. And um, I'm the executive director of the Wasak History Center, so we uh, actually assisted uh, the consulting group with that resurveying and assisted the Vermont Division of Historic Preservation. Um, we have a pretty extensive archives of historic resources, and over um, the last nine years that I've been there, I've been sort of building up um, our knowledge base and our resources to assist um, organizations, town, um, and the division to uh, make use of our resources to uh, help the decision-making process in whatever capacity that could be. Um, we created a, a house history program, we've got buildings, and on our website actually built up a historic resource base. Um, and in the discussion about the CLG, obviously I'm very interested in that because uh, I believe both on the village and town level there should be somebody who's uh, intimately uh, knowledgeable about those resources and to be able to provide those. Um, so I'll be kind of, kind of jumping back and forth. Um, I think I'm well suited for that. I've been uh, in the history field for 22 years and in that I've participated in many, many historic preservation projects, um, adaptive reuse, uh, historic preservation renovation projects. Um, we're currently uh, talking about that at our site with the Dana House, which was built in 1807. Um, so I think I could bring a lot to the table. I'm pretty uh, aware of what the commission's, uh, um, I guess, responsibilities for. We're not regulatory. I'm not interested in that. Um, but I think with the education pieces and um, sort of the assisting to grants and, and getting into that pool of the uh, preservation grant awards that come from the federal government and get channeled through the division. Um, there are definitely things that are in my head that I'm knowledgeable about that I think need attention. One, biggest one right here is um, obviously a historic survey structures report for the town hall. And then there's some other associated uh, properties and structures like the Elm Street Bridge that need attention. And I think the commission could help that. And we have um, at the History Center um, Douglas Ross's archive when they did actually completely restore that bridge. And so there's things that I can create access to and uh, create a better knowledge base on. Okay. Any questions? Do you have any issues attending meetings, whether they are at in during the day or at night? No. Okay. Joe, any questions? All right, well, we'll thank, thank you, you and thank you. <laughs> you're right. free to go. Thank you. Okay, Charlie is. Is, Char is Charlie in there in the audience? No. No. Douglas. He's in the upper. Okay, right. okay. then let's so move on to. Um, Mr. Keller. Mr. Keller, Doug. Yes, hello. Go ahead. Tell us about yourself. Um, well, I'm a town resident. I. Um, have an interest in history. I'm a lay historian. You know, I don't have any formal training or uh, job experience in history, but I've lived in town since, uh, well, I moved here in 1981 and uh, lived in some old homes, <laughs> historical homes. Um, we came here to find the grave sites of some of my ancestors who were 
uh, some of the original settlers at Woodstock, um, specifically the Vaughn family. Uh, our family was here in uh, you know the late 1700s, moved on to um, Wyoming when things got tough in the late 1800s. And that's where my mother was from and her family uh, tree uh, extends back to Woodstock. So we, um, we came here in 81 to look for some of their grave sites and ended up staying here. I got a job at the Woodstock Inn and I worked there for on and off for 17 years. Uh, I managed some of the properties for them, Suicide Six, or, well, Saskadena Six now, I guess it's called, for uh, seven years, the Country Club and Fitness Center. Uh, I managed a grocery store here in town, Max Market. Currently, I work at the uh, State of Vermont DMV in Springfield. I'm the driving examiner for the DMV down there. And uh, anyway, getting back to history, I love history. I love old homes and um, properties and old uh, old highways and byways that are forgotten about, cellar holes, uh, you know, um, archaeological sites that that uh, we might have in town. Um, so I'm interested in helping to preserve that, but also to uh, do it in such a, such a way as not to, you know, preclude modern development and growth of the town for the benefit of all. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll just ask Ray. the same question of whether you have an issue attending meetings, whether they be in the day, in the day or night. Uh, no, I can uh, get off work at uh, four thirty, so I can attend meetings in in the evening and daytime. Thank you. Great. And uh, since Charlie's not here, I guess we can come back to him and move on. Um, on the agenda. So up next is citizen comments, and I see. I think I see John Spector on there, um, or at least his phone number. Johnny on. Yes, can you hear me? We, I can hear you. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, hi, I'm John Spector uh, from Woodstock. Um, the Economic Development Commission um, uh, submitted, uh, approved, and the Select Board approved in March a grant for several housing programs, one of which, or two of which provided incentives for uh, community members to build either accessory dwelling units or to convert their rental units, short-term rentals, to long-term rentals. We have the, and, and, and the select board approved the funding of each of those programs. Um, normally, once the select board approves funding, uh, they don't get involved in the actual spending of that money. The grantees then spend the money, the, the EDC checks to make sure that the spending is for the purpose granted, but otherwise the select board doesn't have any further involvement once you approve the funding of a grant. In this particular case, the grantee is the EDC itself. We're the ones that are running the ADU and the rental incentive program. And we have our first applicant that is terrific who wants to build an ADU. Um, the applicant met all of our criteria and the applicant was presented to the full EDC at a public meeting and the EDC unanimously voted to approve and to give a portion of our funding um, to this. Uh, it, it was $10,000 uh, and we have budget for $30,000 so we can do three ADUs as a pilot test this year. We've never done it quite this way before and my question for the select board, Joe and I talked about it briefly, is whether or not you need to approve this. Because it, my view is that you don't, because you've granted, you've already granted the funds for this purpose. The EDC has confirmed that this grant complies with the purpose, that, that the fund, that the spending complies with the purpose. And so what we would prefer to do is to allow the EDC in our public meetings to approve these applicants without coming for each applicant to the select board. But since this is the first time this has happened, I wanted to come to the select board and ask if you're comfortable with that. If you are terrific, it will speed up the process and perhaps lighten your agenda. But if you're not comfortable with it, of course, we will come with each applicant before you and ask for your approval. 
Thank you, John. And as, uh, as I said, when we spoke earlier, I, th I think that you're on the right track. And I think because we approved it um, already by motion and vote, I don't think we need to do again. Uh, Ray and Susan, what are your, what are your thoughts? I agree. I agree. I think as long as you're within the parameters that were approved, you don't have to come back to us. Okay. So I think we're all in agreement there. Um, and um, so I move on if there's any other other citizen comments. Um, I'm not seeing any on my on my screen. Is there anyone in the audience? No. In, in person. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so next up on the agenda is the municipal officials. Joe, excuse me. Just back, and, this is John Spector. Thank you guys. Oh, I'm sign off. Appreciate it. Yep. Have a good night. Bye. -bye. Um, this was never about any actual um, permits or permitting. Um, Select board received a letter um, about two weeks ago and involving um, letters from neighbor to neighbor, which would ordinarily be uh, just a neighbor dispute that we would have no stake or role in. Um, although this was brought to the select board's attention because select board oversees the various committees and commissions that are part of the town government and the letter identified the writers of the letter by their positions. Um, and I understand this is a um, touchy topic, but this, this is the agenda item. So um, Ray or Susan, I'd ask you first if you have any opinion or. Um, I, I think this is a, if all the permits are in place, I think this is a neighbor a neighbor problem that they have to, um, Resolve. It's not up to us if all the permits are in place. I mean, I, I think the letters were written as in private capacity and not in public capacity. Certainly, if this matter came before any of either of the commissions that um, anyone serves on and they didn't recuse themselves, then I think we would have a role. But I don't think we have a role in this. Okay, and we do have in the packet the uh, town's conflict of interest policy, which um, doesn't cover or have any, you know, thing pointed to this type of situation. Um, what I'm hearing, and I think I agree with you, Susan, is, you know, future. Um, top, you know, if this comes up at either a planning commission or a conservation commission, the authors of the letters would be um, obligated to recuse themselves respectively, but um, I'm not sure what the select board would do at this time. Joe, can I, it's Peter Vollers. Can yeah, hi Peter. Peter. You see me there? Can I chime in? Hey, yeah, please. Because I, I forwarded the letter to you guys. So Peter Vollers, I'm a Woodstock attorney living far, far away. Um, but I still practice every day in Woodstock. I, I represent Dan and Meredith Pierce, who are building a home with Chris Ambrose as their, as their general contractor on Rabbit Hill Way off of Route 12. Single family residence, you know, pretty garden variety thing. I'm sure it's going to be a beautiful home. If Chris is building it, they have hired all the normal local contractors to do the work, have received their town zoning permit to construct state wastewater permit. Um, they're just waiting on now for their stormwater discharge permit. And they've received now what I would consider repeated letters from their neighbors. And, and the only reason why I brought this to your attention was because in the very first letter, the neighbors, um, Howard Crum and Mary Margaret Sloan, introduced themselves in the very first paragraph of the letter as being 
vice chair of the Woodstock Planning Commission. And, um, and then Howard is, uh, is a member of the Town Conservation Commission. And I just think I totally respect that they might have um, issues with somebody building a home next door. You know, it's not unusual in Woodstock. I just brought it to your attention because I would ask that maybe something could be said about members of these commissions not using their public position as in, in my opinion, and as a way to intimidate new people coming into town, hiring all the right contractors, getting all the right permits and just building a home for themselves and their family. Um, you know, we're not talking commercial use here. We're talking for their own personal use. They have a, they have a one child who I think is at Deerfield Academy and they plan to, once they fully, once the home is built, they plan to move here eventually, and you know, be members of the, the local, um, the, you know, the local community and contribute to the local community as they are already. So that's the reason why. We also noticed that in other later letters that they're copying the town of Woodstock on that. So we wanted to make sure that we gave you our side of the story here and let you guys know that, you know, there's, there's, there's no small amount of attention going into this is not some sort of rogue building project, clear cutting, things like that. They've cut enough trees just to build their home and to create the, you know, a nice yard around the home just as any, any of us have done and, and still do um, in Woodstock. So that's the only reason why I brought it to your attention. And um, I totally understand that, you know, that it's not in their official capacity, but still um, it's definitely meant in the later letters are copying in Two Rivers Auto Quichi Planning Commission and all these different things. When there was adequate opportunities, you guys know, to object to these things during the permitting process. So. Um, we just felt that it is something you should know about, that you do have members of your commissions who are, in my opinion, using their public position for their own personal reasons. And I don't think that's a correct thing to do. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Peter. And um, thank you for the previous story. Mary Margaret Sloan is asking to respond. Um, yeah, go ahead, Mary Margaret. over here so that you all can see me better. Tom. Um, so I hope you'll forgive me. I have written comments. I wanted to make sure that I um, said everything that I wanted to say. Um, so you have our detailed written response to the Pierce's false claims. However, just yesterday, we found out that they have violated our town regulations. They began work more than three weeks before they were legally allowed to. Their permit is dated June 6th. I, I me, just want to finish. Let me finish. Because this is really just not our purview. This is in the zoning but, office but or is, the state office. Yep. And we don't get involved in zoning matters. So this is the permit that was issued by this town. I know, but that does it wasn't issued by the select board, and we're not an appellate body to the zoning at all. So it's just really not yeah. something we should be hearing. Okay, all right. Um, well, then um, let me continue to address the other issue. The, the permit violation, I'll take up with Stephen. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, so we all know what's going on with this letter. The Pierces are trying to distract everyone from the environmental impacts of their actions and them breaking the law. They illegally clear cut. Mary Margaret. Okay, I, let me, I, I'll jump to it. I'll jump yeah, to it. Yeah, we just to really okay. don't want to hear the yeah. merits yep. of right. of the dispute. It's just right. not really. So, and I and I, you know, I, I know I know another neighbor is here as well, and I know it's a really sensitive. It's a very sensitive issue, issue. but it's just it's not very something sensitive. we can get involved in. Yep. Okay. To specifically address their allegations. But we're not even. We're, I mean, we're we're not listening uh, to their allegations yes. either. But Mr. Voller just listed them and okay. I deserve but, an opportunity to respond to okay. that. Okay, you'll just respond to what he just, said. Just respond not, to what he said. That would be great. Howard and I have done nothing wrong. There's no conflict of interest. Under the policy, because the Pierce's property, and I'm saying what you've said, but please hear me out. Because the Pierce's property won't be coming before either of the committees we serve on, a conflict of interest is simply not possible. We didn't abuse any power because we have none in this case. The only ones who have power are the Pierces themselves, 
the state of Vermont, and you, the town of Woodstock. And we, in fact, begged the Pierces to act responsibly, um, but we have no power. We're not against thoughtful development. We're just against indiscriminate destruction of Woodstock's environmental and scenic resources. Gilbert's Hill is not only our home, but it's also a national treasure, contributing to Woodstock's economy for nearly 100 years. It's on the National Historic Register, and it's protected by easements from the Vermont Land Trust, the Preservation Trust of Vermont, and the Green Mountain Club. No one can ever develop our land, and it's open for public recreation. Hundreds of donors, including probably folks in this room. Oh, Joe, if I can interrupt, can I object? No. no. Look, no. Sorry. No. Can I, I object? I no, you know what? We're going to let her speak, and then that's going to be the end of it because we have we have no, no power either. No power <laughs> in this, so um, we'll listen to what she has to say, and then that's going to be it for this. Right, right. Can if you um, can I just chime in for a minute? I'm having trouble yeah. hearing, so I'm just going to ask that you um, share the rest of her statement because um, I I can't hear what's being said. Um, so hundreds of donors, including folks in this room, probably came together to protect the history and the scenery of this landmark, and it's why we are so passionate about protecting the Prosper Valley and why we joined the Planning and Conservation Commissions. We shouldn't be made to be afraid to speak up because a new neighbor tries to defame us personally and publicly. And I'm happy to, I have copies of my statement. And is that what was emailed? Or? Nope, oh, this okay. is what okay. I've said tonight. Great. Um, but again, we have. I understand, we, we but, can't do anything the, but about that's this. what was raised, so. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, additions. Additions and deletions, but, Joe. I, I'm I'm satisfied with where we are so far. Um, if there's nothing else that you, Ray or Susan has, no. Okay. Are there any um, additions to or deletions from the agenda? The um, only one I have is the additional um, executive session um, topic. Um, And Ray or Susan, do you have anything or Tom? No, all right. So we'll add an executive, one of the, an additional executive session to the two already that we have. Um, and that brings us to the manager's report, Tom. Tom? Okay, um, some of these things I think the board may already know, uh, but I'm just going to kind of repeat myself, uh, nothing else for uh, informing the public about the things that are happening uh, in the town or at the town hall. Uh, we have a new hire. Uh, it is a part-time planning and zoning administrator. Uh, this person will work approximately uh, 25 hours a week. Uh, and we'll do other things at the town hall, uh, such as assist in the manager's office when people are absent, and there'll be some cross-training between uh, this person and other current employees in the town hall so that we can just have some uh, flexibility when people are out. Um, a number of people have asked about the Village Green Historic Sign. This is a, a cast iron sign. It's in the center of the Village Green. It's a property of the Vermont Division of Historic Preservation. Uh, the division routinely uh, removes these signs and refurbishes them, and that's what happened to the sign. Uh, it's expected to be returned, I'm going to say with about 30 days now. My reports are 45, but this was written some time ago. Uh, Tom, can I interrupt for a minute? I'm having trouble hearing you. Are the mics on the thing? Are they? Where are they? Yeah, see if see if that helps. Is that any better? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now loud and clear. 
Mary Margaret. Okay. Um, we have some just, other mics. Yeah, just, yeah that's, that's good. Joe, Wendy Seipel, who is also a, a neighbor of um, the Sloan Crum household, has also asked to leave a written document with us. No, leave. just leave it with us. I'm happy okay. to read it, but I, I understand that no, you guys I, aren't a part of it. I don't okay. want to reopen that. Yeah. No, so we, yeah, she's just going to leave it. Thank you. So continue, Tom. Thank you for your. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, third item on my report is the uh, municipal manager replacement uh, process has begun. A recruiter has been hired, and this recruiter will organize. And uh, pretty much uh, lead the uh, search along with the trustees and the select board. Uh, we have had a key personnel uh, resignation. The director of public works has resigned effective uh, September 2nd. It's going to be a big loss for the town of Woodstock. He was doing a great job, uh, but he had, uh, he's had an opportunity that he really can't turn down. Uh, we were already began advertising for a replacement. The uh, resumes are due August 26th. So if anybody wants to uh, has any leads for us, uh, someone that is qualified to do this job, uh, please contact me. We did receive some uh, First Amendment training uh, and um, that happened on August 8th. We are looking at additional security measures uh, in the town. We do have a quote for security cameras uh, around the town hall, and we're looking for funding uh, to pay for that. That might be something that comes back to the board if we don't find the funding to see if the boards and the trustees will, uh, will fund those. Uh, I think they're pretty much needed things. We've sent out uh, various routine requests for bids uh, that uh, normally go out. For example, bids for winter sand, uh, gravel, and uh, diesel fuel have been issued. Um, there is an infiltration issue in the sewer line crossing uh, Kendrick Brook uh, just downstream from the uh, um, bridge on Central Street. I think that's going to be repaired this week by a subcontractor that actually is going to line that uh, sewer line as it exists today. So there's no disturbance, but uh, there will certainly be some equipment uh, operating there um, and a little bit of commotion. Uh, and then I just wanted to uh, provide some information that the listers uh, produced um, and it shows uh, that since 2020, we're seeing an upward trend in the uh, growth of the grand list. Um, it's uh, not an outrageous amount of growth, but uh, on average 2% per year for each year. So um, that's kind of good news. Any questions? All right. I've got none. Um, which I think brings us to um, liquor, the uh, liquor license application for the brasserie. If it, everything looked order, in order to me, um, I would entertain a motion if there's no discussion. If we appoint and approve the brasserie liquor license. Okay, motion by Susan, second by Ray. I call for vote. All in favor? Aye. I didn't hear Susan, but um, I said I. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, motion carries, and that brings us to new business. So, first item on new business, as uh, Tom was just talking about, real quick, we have to adjust the or uh, set the um, FY twenty three tax rate, and. I remember correctly, I think there's a proposed, I'm on the wrong page here, hold on. There we go. As it's 0 0.5851 for the total town and um, is that what we're looking at here, Tom? 
are we looking at the uh, actually probably the total town with police of 0. 0.6549. I can't remember last year if we did how we did if it was the town and town police separate or we did the total with police. Um, I, I don't see any reason why you want to separate it out. So I think it's 0. 0.6549, right? Yep. Yep. Wow. Is there any discussion or do we are we ready for a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the tax rate for 2023. Second. I believe that Ray made a motion. I second Susan, it. Okay. And as long as Nikki is able to have it for the notes, for the minutes, um, I wasn't able to catch the whole motion. Um, but my guess is it was to the gist of accepting the town tax rate as proposed. Yes. Okay. A call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. And the other new business item for tonight is um, the update for the authorized representative. Um, this is for the loan documents um, for the uh, South Woodstock Wastewater Treatment Facility Refurbishment Project. Um, I don't think we need a motion. I think we just need to sign this if um, Nikki to send it around his DocuSign. What's Ray and Susan, what's your opinion on that? We probably should just move Make to authorize vote. Tom All anyway, right. just to be. <clears throat> yeah. So they know um, Bill Crib is no longer here, but they don't know Wayland's not here anymore. Yeah. So then I'd be I'd call for a motion to update the contact information um, to Mr. General as, as presented in the packet. Ray was also commenting that we probably need to let them know that um, Wayland's not the no. appropriate signatory either. Yeah. Right. Now, now. They sent it to the right email address, um, wrong person. And soon that won't be uh, Elijah anymore, so. At least they have the right email address, but yeah, if we could just let them know that. Um, Joe. The staff down there is changing. Hey, Zoe. I did let them know that Waylon is okay. no longer here. Um, and I will say, I believe that I was the authorized um, official for the ESB because I do all the requisitions and I request all the money. Um, so it was both. Um, Bill and myself. I don't know if that means anything for this time, um, but just letting you know. Okay. I think your name still appears on the document, so it's just that they want to replace uh, Bill's. Bill Carbon because they know he's not here. Yeah. So I would move that we authorize or that we approve the signing of the appointment of alternate authorized representative. I'll second it. Okay. Motion by Susan, second by Ray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. That's it for new business for tonight. Um, is there any other business to come before the board before we move on? Seeing seeing nothing um can we uh let's see i think we're ready to move into executive session which is going to be um under one vsa 313 let's see one 
three. And let's see, what are the other? Both of those are, and E, one E. Is there a motion? I move we go into executive session. I'll second it. Yeah, motion by Susan, second by Ray to move into executive session. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now we're back. The first um, items up for that are ready for motions are um, Mr. Powers and Mr. Kelleher's applications for the um, Historic Preservation Committee. I move we appoint Matthew Powers and Douglas Kelleher to the Town Historic Preservation Commission. I'll second it. Motion by Susan, second by Ray. All in favor, appoint Mr. Powers and Mr. Kelleher. Aye. Aye. All right. Okay, that motion carries. That brings us to the town manager search committee. I make a motion to appoint Susan uh, for the town manager search committee. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. And it sounds seen. And I'll make a motion that Ray Bourgeois be appointed to the town manager search committee. All right, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Thank Please. you, guys. Yeah, and then I guess we will come back to appoint our citizen yes. person. We might just have a special meeting or something there. Um, and then the last thing is the. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the general release. Second. All right, motion by Ray, second by Susan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that motion carries. Point of uh, order, I wonder if you want to consider, uh, I guess you don't want to say any names yet until we. No. Yeah, forgot that. Right. Yeah. 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 All right, and that just leaves approval of the minutes. I was not here for the July 19th meeting, so I don't think I can vote, which means we don't really have a quorum to approve those minutes. Okay, why don't we just bring push these off to the next meeting? We'll do all the minutes at once at the next meeting. Sounds good to me. Great. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Have a good night, you guys. Thank you. All right.